Now I introduce a double deep Q network. Q learning uses this update equation to update its new Q value at state S and action A from its current Q value and the temporal difference error include two parts. One is the target, another is the current value. So the Q learning, in the Q learning agent start from a current state and the policy pi, select action A, reach this point. We want to uh, find the optimal policy by uh, update this uh, Q value. And the agent sets up a, a target. First term is uh, yes in the real world, and the second term is a Q value at a state next state as a prime, and the policy pi select action A prime. However, the Q learning has a overall estimation problem because if we always use this maximum, then now we'll have a big bias. So to reduce this bias, we use the double Q learning. Double Q learning means we are design a two Qs, Q1 and Q2, we will update them at the same time. The idea is uh, when we update Q1, his target generated by Q2. And we will update Q2, it's a target generated by Q1. Use this way, we can dramatically reduce the bias. Double Q network, double deep Q network, use based on the double Q learning method. Here, this is a standard double Q network update equation. Here we have two uh, uh, networks. One is uh, uh, this uh, theta as the uh, network parameters. Another is uh, theta prime is another network. Right now, we not uh, you know equally update both network. Instead, we uh, use one of the we use as the Q network. We update uh, by using this uh, current data as the input and the generate the Q value on all the possible actions. And then when uh, we select, you know, which action will generate our maximum Q value. And the Q prime is the metal parameters for this uh, double, uh, for this target network. The target network, we don't need to update. We just uh, copy, copy, you know, the parameter from a Q network to here. Maybe not just the last iteration, maybe some of the iteration before. And we use the next state as a prime, as the input, generator this target Q. And this Q, not, you know, we find the maximum Q uh, from this output, you know, over the uh, all the possible A prime uh, probability. Instead, we uh, use this uh, generator, you know, from a Q network, and this A may be not, uh, you know, corresponding to the maximum Q. Anyway, we use the Q corresponding to this A as the target Q in the target Y. And use this target Y, we uh, as a tar target in the supervised miner to train this Q network. And then finally, we find the uh, optimal policy pi here. And the, because, for example, if we sample use the, uh, use the episodic sampling, that means the data uh, will have a correlation. To uh, break the relation between the samples, we use this uh, 
replay memory. That means we put all the uh, experience in this uh, memory. Or we train this network, we just uh, randomly pick up from uh, uh, this uh, replay memory. In that way, we can break their you know, relationship in the original episodic uh, sampling. That's the idea of the double deep Q network. And here we call how can we select the Q in the target, not you know maximum Q. Instead, you know we uh, find the Q corresponding to the A. We select it in the Q network. However, in the two uh, very uh, typical. Uh, applications one for the Atari game. It generates this uh, uh, queue in a target. So you, you know you, you use this uh, uh, target network, select this uh, maximum queue by scan this uh, this action in the action space. Seems to get a very good result. No, uh, we cannot see that big bias. Another example, a typical example, is the snake games. In the same way, you they use the target network, just to, you know, scan the action A prime, see which Q is the maximum, and then use this maximum Q in the target to train the Q network. For more details, please check with this reference. Thank you. Bye.